I've been using Riverside and Descript for about five years at this point, and it's also something that I teach clients of mine so that they can own their means of production. What used to take a team of two to eight people can now be done by yourself if you want to, thanks to software like Riverside and Descript. So in this video, I'm going to help you choose the right one for your needs. Because choosing the wrong editing software kills podcasts before they even have a chance to begin. If you're overwhelmed every time you open up the tools that you need, that friction is enough to throw you off course once the motivation of being a new show starts to wear off. So I'm going to compare Riverside versus Descript across 15 categories that I think are important to consider for beginners who are looking to record their podcasts remotely. Let's start with the first category, which is the user interface. So if you asked me this question four or five years ago, Descript may have had a shot in this category because of the classic version. It was much more approachable than what you see today, especially as they've added much more features over the years to compete with more robust software like Premiere Pro. Now, even though Riverside has actually added a bunch more features over the years, I find that side by side when my clients look at beginning to use these, they are way less overwhelmed looking at something like a Riverside rather than a Descript, even if it can do more. So Riverside definitely takes the win in this category if you're looking for something that's super clean and efficient. Now, let's dive into the next category, which is recording reliability. If we're talking about Descript, there's a couple uh, forms of recording. So first is the screen recording feature, kind of like Loom. This I have found to be wonderful. I have found that I don't need to have a Loom subscription and, you know, recording the screen for tutorials and things like that is pretty wonderful. Next up is going to be if you're recording directly like solo, directly into the software. I have had issues where I recorded for over an hour thinking it'd be okay. And then, you know, the whole time the audio, there was some issue with it. And because there is, you know, it is cloud recording to some extent, I should have known better before I did that. So that was frustrating. But then if you think about, you know, recording with guests, they do have a partnership, I believe with Squadcast. And I used that for one or two episodes, but I felt like it was kind of unfinished. You know, the studio didn't look as and feel as nice as Riverside's does sometimes, right? So when it comes to Riverside, I would say because this is their main thing. This is the feature that they became known for before they even added editing tools inside of it. I would say that Riverside takes the win. And when they have issues that are actually, you know, if you find that your guest is having issues or, you know, something was up in the recording, if you reach out to their customer service, they do have several processes in place to hopefully help you recover that versus I have used tools before Descript and Riverside beyond five years ago where, you know, if it's gone, it's gone. And that was just kind of the norm back then, and that was frustrating. So I do think that Riverside takes the win for recording reliability. They have really figured it out over the years. So the next category is scheduling guests. Descript does not actually have this feature natively. So I would have to say that Riverside wins by default, but I will say that four or five years ago, this was more clunky than it is now. It's more polished and customizable. Back then it was a feature that you'd be like, why would I use this? Uh, you only use it to kind of get the link that you would share maybe to your guest versus you might actually send them the full invite and things like that through the Riverside portal. So Riverside takes the win in this category. The next category is live streaming. Now, of course, when you're doing anything live, you want to reduce the room for error as much as possible. Descript is something that is not supporting any live streaming features currently. And Riverside is actually a place that has made this super smooth over the years where they offer streaming to multiple places. So YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, LinkedIn, any place that actually does offer live, they seem to have an integration to be able to do that, at least in all the major places. And it's actually been smooth enough for some of my clients that if they used something like a StreamYard previously, they've actually switched over to a Riverside because it can do the podcast recording and editing, and it gives you slightly some better features than stuff like StreamYard. So Riverside definitely takes the win in this category. Okay, now let's talk about mobile support. So of course, Descript is primarily designed for desktop. It's not meant to be used on mobile or iPad. They have made editing available on like a browser, so you don't have to have the software downloaded to your desktop, but I don't recommend messing around with that. Riverside has had an app for years. Now I will say they were clunky in the very beginning, and it was only available to iOS users versus now they also have an Android app. And this has vastly improved over the years. It's not perfect by any means, but it has made 
podcasting on the go much more accessible to the point where some of your favorite shows and biggest shows, you will have people who have joined through Riverside recording on, you know, their iPhone from their hotel room with their AirPods on. And so it does open up the door to the types of guests that you can have on and how easily you and your guest or your co-host can capture these recordings if you are using the mobile app. So Riverside takes the win in the mobile support category. Next up, I want to touch quickly on the teleprompter category. So this is another one that Descript doesn't have, but Riverside, ever since they've launched this feature, I've noticed some improvements in terms of flexibility and customizability in terms of how you can use the teleprompter. What's really nice about this is that it reduces the need for you to get a whole bunch of other equipment or have another device set up just so you can kind of read your script. And it, of course, because of how strategically it's placed, if you're using, you know, your laptop webcam, for example, it's kind of making it so that your eyes are still focused on the camera and you're not darting your eyes side to side or top to bottom as you're trying to review or read the bullets um, that you might have in your teleprompter. So Riverside definitely takes the win in this category. Now let's get into the next category, which is editing features. On one hand, Descript is a very, very strong editor, and it's something that has been adding more and more features to make it compete with things like an Adobe Premiere Pro or a DaVinci, versus in the past, you would normally have to couple it with things like a Premiere Pro. And so it seems like they're trying to really double down on being an editing tool versus something like a Riverside would have totally lost four or five years ago because this wasn't even available. They were mainly a remote recording studio and they have only recently added a whole suite of editing tools. And even with that, I will say when you look side by side at everything that is available inside Descript, I will say that it's too much. Like the things that are available and that keep becoming available when it comes to editing features in Descript is just like, they're nice to have, but you're not going to actually use them as a podcaster day to day in your workflow. And other features are kind of annoying. Like for example, captioning. Captioning used to actually be much easier in Descript's legacy version, but in their new version, there's all these presets that one, I don't really like to begin with. So you have to start there and kind of customize every time versus in Riverside, there is actually a save preset option. So once I select my font and my colors and all this kind of stuff, it actually makes it easy for me to pick up where I leave off versus I don't understand why Descript can do all these advanced things, but it doesn't have this basic functionality of being able to save your presets. But what's really insane is in the past year, I would say Riverside has really skyrocketed in its ability to match or exceed what Descript can do as an editor. Because even though Descript has all these cool tools, Riverside makes these features feel very beginner friendly. Even if it can't do some of this more advanced stuff, you find that some of those features are ones you wouldn't really use any ways. And there are some things where, you know, Descript is primarily an editor. If you are using it on desktop, it is faster. Some of the moments that it might pick for your clips turn out to be better. There's some more customization there sometimes, but I do find that increasingly the outputs that I'm getting with Riverside, even if it is, you know, one or two imperfect clip, you can get so many more so quickly and it does the layouts and everything automatically to where it doesn't bother me. And I think Riverside wins in this category and it's partly because of the learning curve. It's so easy to get the hang of compared to something like Descript, but it's also partly due to the combo with this next category, which is the brand kit feature. Now this brand kit category, I did not think would sway me or impact me as much as it has. It is one of the most annoying things actually that I find about Descript because it can do so many advanced things, but compared to all these other tools out there that are way more basic and elementary, something like being able to save your colors, save your fonts and have presets where you're not choosing and making these decisions over and over again, it doesn't have that, right? Which it makes zero sense because, you know, it, I don't know, it can do all these other cool things. So you're like, why can't you do this, right? Versus with something like Riverside, you choose the colors, you choose your fonts. Even the part that I really love is choosing the end screens. So I have these end screens at the end of podcast clips that I will basically, you know, at the end, it's like a three, four second thing that shows the Spotify, 
YouTube and Apple logo to be like, hey, this is a podcast clip. So what that does is that's an extra step that I might have to do in the script that's more manual versus I can set that outro. And in Riverside, when you set that outro, every time the AI clips kind of generate a bunch for you, it will keep all of your brand kit and your presets in mind. So it will actually, without you having to do anything, select anything, it will just add that end screen to all of those clips. So that really impressed me because I was like, wow, you don't realize how much time those little decisions are wasting until you use something like a Riverside that makes it easy for you to do that. So again, Riverside takes the win in this category. Now this brings me to the next category, which is AI tools. The script should get credit here for being one of the pioneers of AI enabled editing software. It is something that if you think about transcriptions without transcription technology, all of this stuff would not be possible of being able to automatically detect which clips are good and give you multiple options and even getting close to being perfect in that regard, right? But I want to acknowledge that the script has gone so far with adding all of these AI tools to it that you know, like I mentioned, the eye correction tool and being able to add a green screen and certain things that you're like, okay, that is cool that I can do that. But how often am I going to use that in my day-to-day -day workflow, right? They seem to be deploying tons and tons of AI features just for the sake of it versus something like Riverside. They do have AI features available as well. For example, their magic clips feature and also their magic editing for the full episode. This is something that years ago when Riverside offered this option where like, hey, auto balance the speaker volume for each guest. When I would do that four or five years ago, that alone would be something that would be clunky and I would actually prefer to put it into like a premiere and balance it out myself versus it has improved so crazily where you literally can hit one click after you were done recording your episode. And if you don't have many mess ups and your guest doesn't either, it can give you a fully fleshed out version ready to go that feels like a full editing team kind of worked on it. Now that same one click variation on the script, which would be kind of their studio setting, right? And when you turn on the studio setting, it basically edits your whole audio file as if, you know, has gone through post-production already. And I just find that it's okay, right? So if you're using it 100%, it's too much. It kind of distorts the recording sometimes, and it's a little aggressive. But if you toggle it down to 30%, 50%, that feature is great and it's usable. And there are tons of other features inside of Descript, like being able to generate titles, being able to generate, you know, a description and things like that for your episode that make it so you don't have to go maybe into ChatGPT separately to do that. But again, it just makes the whole interface more clunky versus I would just rather have the core features available for being able to, you know, deploy AI for the full episode and then being able to use it to generate clips and make that efficient. And Riverside, I found, has done that. Even if Descript's AI tools have some more customization options, I think that Riverside wins just purely because of ease of use and the frequency of use that you're actually going to get out of it. Next up is the category of export options. So all the time I get clients who ask me a form of the question, where do my files go? How do I get these files? Riverside makes it very easy for you to get the audio version that's going to go into your hosting software and the video version if you were uploading to something like YouTube. And I have found that of course, Descript has way more export options to the point where if you are coupling this with something like Premiere Pro or DaVinci, you can export directly from Descript in a way that is ready to edit in those timelines. But because of the sheer overwhelm and, you know, amount of options that you probably won't even find yourself using, I think that Riverside actually wins because of course everything else is so easy to use already that it makes the export feature actually easier because in the past, I will admit that I would use Riverside in conjunction with many other tools, right? So I might export the side-by-side -side version of me and the guest, and then I might export the full speaker version where it's like every time the speaker talks, 
you know, it's switching the full frame, then I would edit that in something like a Premiere Pro versus something like being able to choose the AI layout where it's kind of bouncing back and forth between all these different layouts. And that would be something that a human would have to manually do before. It just makes the whole experience so much smoother. So Riverside absolutely wins when it comes to the export options. Now let's talk about the next category, which is speed and load time. So both softwares rely very heavily on the internet, right? Because they are cloud-based editing softwares. And that's kind of what makes them nice. Everything is saved, every edit, every adjustment, every file is kind of saved in the cloud. But the downside to this is that if you are in an area with poor internet connection, that will affect the speed and load time of certain things that you're using. Now, Descript is very fast, partly because of the fact that you download the software to your computer. You're not just using the browser version, even though they have made that accessible. Versus Riverside is something that even if they do have an app version, you are more likely going to be using it in the browser. And so it makes sense that it is a little bit slower to load in the beginning, but it is not noticeable enough where this would be an issue. Descript does take the win in this category though, purely because of speed and load time. Now this next category is one of the most important ones and that's ease of use. And I found that for years from teaching Riverside and Descript to my clients that both are doable. You know, you can learn both of these, but Riverside is definitely quicker to learn if you don't have any experience at all, versus if you have a little bit of editing background, you're going to be able to grasp Descript as well. But I would say that over the years, Descript has gotten harder to learn. It's not nearly as hard of a learning curve as something like a Premiere Pro, a Final Cut, or DaVinci, but it is definitely beyond something like a Riverside. Riverside wins this category easily because of the streamlined workflow and because there is very minimal friction and this improves the actual consistency of your output which is the name of the game in the first couple years of podcasting remember 90 percent of podcasts don't make it past episode three to episode seven and a large part of that is because the workflow week to week just becomes too much. It is more complex than you anticipated. And it usually starts because of the editing, right? Yes, it can be because of your filming as well. But if the editing is the thing that holds you up between actually getting the episode out and getting excited to feel, you know, the reward of getting that episode out, then ease of use is actually a huge, huge category to keep in mind. Because even though you might be trading off a couple advanced features, you know, that Descript has, that ease of use allows you to show up and actually produce your show week to week, which in the long run, you know, is worth so much more than you think right now. Now, this last category is all-in-one capabilities. If you are an intermediate to advanced user, you're going to find yourself actually needing to couple it with something else anyways. For example, I like to color grade my footage in Premiere Pro. Now, four or five years ago, this would have been the norm for any basic thing that you wanted to do. So even if I wanted to just maybe caption a clip in Descript or in Riverside, I would have to, you know, involve some other tools in my workflow. But if we are considering all in one, both Riverside and Descript can actually hold their own depending on where you're coming from. Descript is a very strong editor and might win all in one from that perspective, but it still requires other tools for the different parts of your workflow. And so for this reason, Riverside wins because of their recent upgrades. They have made it so that you can schedule, you can record, you can edit, you can live stream, you can promote all from one software. So considering all 15 categories, Riverside is clearly the winner overall, especially as I consider who I'm making this for. You want high quality content from start to finish without the friction and without feeling like you need to become an editor or learn all this stuff before you get started versus Riverside actually gives you a chance to learn as you go. So if you enjoyed this, make sure to check out the full tutorial on Riverside. You can even get a 15% discount on any paid plan using Using my code in the description below. I appreciate you hanging out, taking the time, and I will see you on the next one.